first question about DJU. It's predicting, of course, what's going to happen in 2024. If you look at the past three years of DJU's efforts on the ground, the amount of carries he's registered, I'm taking away quarterback sacks. In 2021, DJU logged 84 carries. In 2022, DJU logged 120 carries. And last season, 57 carries. Mm -hmm. How many carries for DJU in 2024 in this offense? You know, I... I uh... 65. I I would like to see him have more than that, Tom, but he is not like that's it's not like asking Jaden Daniels to run mm -hmm. or even Jordan Travis, obviously, who didn't really towards the end of his career want to run. Um DJ's not that kind of a of an athlete. He's not that kind of a freak. He's not a Mickey Miss sort of guy. He is um a big, big strong man who's going to get the tough yards if you need him to. I will say this, and I will qualify it a little bit here. My criticisms of DJU in the past, when we saw him at Clemson or we saw him at Oregon State, and he had some good seasons in there. He, when he's good, he's good. He was good against us in Tallahassee. Um, is that I don't think he was always a willing runner. I never felt like he loved to run. He's not afraid. I'm not trying to paint a picture of somebody who's frightened by contact, but I just don't think that was a part of his game that he embraced. It wasn't something that I thought he loved to do. Some guys, I hate to do this, but some guys love to run. Tim Tebow mm -hmm. couldn't wait to run. I mean, that, I mean, in fact, it was almost a criticism, right? Like that guy wanted to run. And part of that was because he was, a really big, strong guy right. who was not afraid. And frankly, even though he's who he is, it was incredible to watch him run over defenses in the SEC. I, I, I you probably won't never see that again. It's very rare. Cam Newton liked to run. He was really good at it. Really, really good at it. And was a monster of a man, a freak of an athlete. DJ does not fall in any of those categories or anything close to it. He's just a big, strong kid. So I think you have to have a willingness to run to get the tough yards between the tackles with him. I think you have to show that he'll keep and run uh, on read option. I think you have to see that, right? You have to, you have to show a willingness to tuck it. Um, and I think that Mike will get back to that. I think Norvell will get back to that. I think he wanted to do it a year ago, but I don't believe Jordan Travis wanted to run. And I think Mike realized we had a very good defense. We weren't facing murderer's row of offenses after you got past LSU. So you were going to be able to kind of be in the game until your passing game got clicking and sort of you broke off a long Trey Benson run, created field position, whatever it might be. So he didn't have to run Jordan, so he thought, I won't run him. I won't run him if I don't have to because I don't want him to get hurt because Jordan Travis is not a big guy. DJ Elo is a big guy and can withstand those hits. So I think it's a happy medium there trying to find that, have it be a part of your offense. I just don't think it's a go-to the way it is with certain other quarterbacks. So I'll, I'll add a bonus question. So we'll end up having four. Uh, the last three seasons, DJU has amassed four, seven, and six rushing touchdowns on each season. Over under six and a half, over under six and a half rushing touchdowns for DJU this season. Uh, under. Okay. See, I, I thought you would have been bullish on at least inside the five yard line. You're going to use this kid as a battering ram. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I, I'd be surprised if they did, but I, I would. I'd try to use them that way, but I don't think Mike will. I, I think that they've got some some options at running back right now that are pretty strong, pretty big, stout dudes. And if you're big on the offensive line, you can hand it to a running back. Yes, you can. Uh, Roy Dell will be a good answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kaziah, Cam Davis, all good answers. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see Cam Davis. The uh, next question is not about Cam, unfortunately. Sorry, yeah. maybe we'll do that next week. We can do a <laughs> Cam Davis over under 1,050 yards rushing. <laughs> Yeah. Completion percentage, you'll see the pattern here, at least for now. Completion percentage for DJU over the last three years. 2021, 56%. This is rounded to the nearest percent. 2022, 62%. 2023, 57%. Mm -hmm. What percentage is the uh, completion go rate going to be this year for DJU in Tallahassee? 
It's going to be over 60%. And here's the thing. It's got to be, uh, you cannot be a college quarterback and college offenses going against college defenses and not complete over 60% of your passes. It's a huge red flag that he has had a couple of 50 something percent completion percentage uh, seasons. That ain't good. This is not good. And, and, and that is a problem with him. He's not always the most accurate thrower of the football. Love the arm. Big cannon for an arm can really make a defense have to play you honest and stretch the field, but he misses some easier throws, and he can't miss those throws. Now, Mike will put him in some friendly situations, and I think that will increase the completion percentage. Um, I think we can run quick game with him, obviously, with the speed you now have on the outside to go along with the height. I would say that the you'll see it tick up, and it'll be north of 60% this year, uh, and I think it just needs to be. I mean – He's played a lot of football. He's seen a lot of things now. This should be his best year by far. He's got weapons to throw to. We'll see if this offensive line's good. I think it will be pretty good. Uh, he's got running backs to help alleviate some pressure. I really – he's got a star tied in. Uh, I don't – I don't see a reason it won't be over 60%. Yeah, you get to define after the season just how quarterback friendly this offense is. I think that's the fun of it. You know, Jonathan Smith's offense is a lot of fun to watch. Uh, just checking out Oregon State a little bit closer after, you know, the, the DJU rumors were surfacing. Yeah. It's a really fun offense. It's multiple as hell. Dare yeah. I say more multiple than we run? Uh, but it can be a little bit more difficult. There aren't as many layup throws. Uh, this offense uh, generates a lot of easy looks. If you're smart enough to handle the pre-snap, which he has to be because that offense was complicated that he's coming from, I agree. It probably should be in the mid-60s when the season's over. I also want to say that I think, you know, I, I saw somebody on the boards quoted me and said, Jeff Cameron just said our offense is going to be better this year than, than last, whatever it was the other day. You were on the boards? Yeah, I went on the boards to to make sure that everything posted for the Q and A from oh, yeah. the Renegade Room. I wanted to make sure that people got their questions answered, and I, you know, um, it was it wasn't a lot of questions, but I wanted to be sure that the video went up and all that. So when I went over there, then I started perusing to see what the topics were, and I went over to the Tribal Council because I was checking out Langston's stuff. I was in the recruiting, but I, I. I Surveyed the whole landscape, Tom. Well, and, hot damn! Yeah. It's like you're at the you're at the flea market. You're saying I'm going to stop at that stand. I'm yeah. going to stop at that stand. I went tribal council. I went tribal council club. I went recruiting premium and renegade room. I did it all, buddy. I was there. I was, and uh, yeah, I I saw where somebody quoted. You said Jeff just said. I didn't look at all the responses, but I saw where Jeff just said that our offense is going to be better than it was last year. I, I believe that. I'm going to stand by that. I, I don't think the offense was great last year. And I think Mike is more multiple than he showed last year, Tom. I think yeah. last year we got in a rut, and it was because he couldn't trust the offensive line. Yeah. And, and then it, they got hurt. And then they got hurt. So you're just – you're finding a way. You're, you're, yeah. you're, not, you're not dumbing it down because the players know what to run. You're just simplifying it because they're not capable – of yeah, I, I don't think people realize. I really don't think people realize that that offense last year was was it was okay. It was just okay. It was not a great offense, yeah. and um, they they did early in the year a lot of things that I think would have continued to grow. We would have grown some things out of what they were doing that we weren't allowed to because guys got hurt and. I believe Jordan Travis played much of the year a little dinged. And I just – there's just a lot there that we didn't need to get into, we're not allowed to get into. Yeah. I think the offense is way better than it showed last year, and I think we'll be reminded of that if we're healthy this year. You'll see some things where you're like, wow, this offense is more consistent, it's more varied – it's uh, more nuanced than it was a year ago. There, It's more multiple than it was a year ago. And it's going to remind you of the way that he used to scheme things up when we had far less talent. Yeah, the, the part about Jordan, I believe, is true um, about him playing dinged up. But I will say this, so that that's out of the way, the qualifier. If Jordan from 2022 with deep ball accuracy was in last year's offense, my, this would have been. Last year's offense would have been everything that we expected it to be. Yeah. Because that would have opened up so much more underneath and you would have had to play the run a little bit more honest. Like it just, it didn't end up working out that way. But that's a nice segue because the final question, 
Last year, Jordan Travis averaged roughly 275 passing yards per game. He played in the 11th game, but he had four pass attempts and he got hurt. So it's roughly 275 passing yards per game. DJU will go over or under 275 passing yards per game this season. He'll go under that, but it'll be close. They're going to run the ball more effectively. I think they're hell-bent on running the ball more effectively, and I don't think they're going to need him to throw it around the lot as much as they needed Jordan Travis to throw it around the lot. Uh, we had explosive plays from Trey Benson, but we did not have consistency in the run game. And Jordan never hardly ran the ball, and so you didn't have that aspect either. And I just felt like this was a boomer bust sort of offense last year. It was very weird. It, it, it's frustrating, frankly. Um, so I think if they can run the ball at all, you're not going to ask DJ to throw it for close to 300 yards a game. And 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 that's what you're telling me I have to choose from. Like if I'm going to take the over, am I taking the over as in like he's throwing for 285, 290 a game? Nah, I don't think he will. I think it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 275, 270, something like that, 265. And um, I'm fine with that because I want to run the ball more anyhow. So if you're considering uh, Jordan Travis rushing attempts last year, not including sacks, you're at 59. So basically what you're projecting is DJ is going to run the ball about the same amount as Jordan per game. Maybe, maybe slightly more, maybe slightly more. And Jordan last year completed about 64% of his passes. I think that's the neighborhood you think that DJ is going to operate in under Mike Norvell. And DJ is going to throw for about the same amount of yards as Jordan. So you're going to get a very similar quarterback. But what I'm hearing you say, if you believe the offense is going to be better and you've got a very similar production out of the quarterback, is that we're going to run the ball. We're going to be able to run the ball this season. Well, we'll be able to run the ball and we'll be healthier. So yeah. I think the explosives will be more frequent. And I think that there will be a, also the types of runs can be very different. You know, I mean, that's the other thing is like DJ may only run 10 more times than, than Jordan, but if there's a willingness to run in short yardage situations, it's a very different kind of run. Um, and there may be some called runs that we didn't really have for Jordan last year. Jordan, you know, they didn't want him to run. So it'll just look different. It'll look different. Just statistically, it may not be that varied, but it'll look different. It Well, it has to. Yeah. Look at those two quarterbacks year over year, and they couldn't look much different. I mean, Jordan. Well, and, and, and I'm going to tell you that, again, Mike, I thought, got into a bit of a rut, and I think he was frustrated. I, I, I don't think that went as well as he had hoped last year offensively. I'm sure his hopes were – well, I know they were. They were sky high going into the season because of the weapons that they added, and then you have that LSU game, and the offense is very good, in particular in the second half. Uh, they really get it moving once Jordan settled down. Not a great first half for him. Um, and then you saw really what it could look like because that's the – I mean, that might be the only damn game yeah. where you have everybody at full strength. And you saw what a fresh, healthy, hungry, focused Keon Coleman was. You saw what Johnny Wilson was. You saw what you saw what Jordan Travis was. They had Jaheim Bell – looked like another player altogether in that LSU game. There's not another game the rest of the year where Jaheim Bell has that speed because he ends up hurting his ankle somewhere along the way early in the season, and he's never right again. He's never come he, – he's not close to it. So I, I, they just got to be healthier, I, I, and they got to run the ball to create the balance they want. Okay, so let me steal a question from next week. I actually had one queued up for next week, but because we're talking about how the offense is going to look, Last season, 2023, Florida State had exactly two running backs rush, or at any player, because the quarterback can count here, two players amass over 200 rushing yards. It was Trey Benson at 905, and it was Toa Feely at 463. And then the next closest was Rodney Hill at 190. How many players do you think rush for over 200 yards this season for Florida State? Three. 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 You think it is Kaziah? Yay or nay? Yeah, I think Kazaya will be one. I think Roy Dell. I think Roy Dell will be. Well, I should have said four, shouldn't yep. I? Yeah, so this is that was my test because Kazaya was actually the tell. Yeah, Kazaya is the tell, isn't he? I like Kazaya Holmes. I. It's just hard to imagine you have four guys rush for over two hundred yards, though. You could with Tola Feely thrown in there. Obviously, that's uh, I keep forgetting about him, and I shouldn't do that. Um, Tola Feely. The Alabama kid, 
Yeah. I, I guess the real answer is, do I think Cam Davis is going to run for over oh, 200 yards? I, I knew you thought Cam Davis is going to run for over 200 yards. So that well, was I just answer. do they trust him? Do they trust him? Does he block yeah. when he's in there? Can he block? Because then he'll be then he'll get more reps. I just think he got he's a smart kid and he's a big son of a bitch. I yep. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but I I'll still say I'll still say three.